I, I, I don't know. Um, okay, here we go, guys. Um, reading today. Before we get to Hatchet, we are going to... Jeopardy. No, no Jeopardy today. Stop. Put it away. I'm ready to start reading. Are you guys ready to focus and listen? Jason Morris. Bring me the Chromebook. Guys, we are wasting time. Yes, it's Friday, but and yes, you had a free morning. Those of you that are in here, but don't blow it. Okay, ready to go. Here we go. Um, reading today. Before we get started on Hatchet, we are going to talk about conflict. And usually um, when we read, we can divide any kind of conflict into a story into one of four different types of conflict. And we've talked about conflict already this year. But we're going to do kind of a, I think, a fun little activity all together before we read Hatchet. So first off, remind me, there are four types of conflict. What are the four types of conflict? You can name one of them. Um, Sean. Self-defense nature? Do what? Self-defense nature? Self against nature. Yes. Man versus nature. Josie. Oh, wait. Hang on. We can't hear you. Hang on. The TV isn't working. I hit power. Okay, Josie, now go. Man versus self. Man versus self. What does that mean, man versus self? Man versus nature seems pretty obvious. But what is man versus self, Josie? It's like an internal conflict. Okay, internal conflict. You're kind of struggling on what to do about something. Um, Lily, give me another one. Man versus man. Tell me about man versus man. Okay, yeah, two people are fighting or arguing, having a disagreement. And then the one other one, um, let's see here. We'll go Riley. Man versus society. Man versus society. Tell me about that one, Riley. The society's like disagreeing with that one person and he's trying to make them agree with them. Okay. So yeah, the person is having a disagreement with something that is otherwise accepted by society overall. Okay. So I'm gonna give you a location. And you're gonna have to give me an example of each of the four types of conflict. That, would, that could possibly take place at that location. So we're going to do an example together so you know what I mean. Okay, so let's all pretend we are at Walmart. And what kind of a man versus self conflict could you have at Walmart? Whoa, 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 whoa. Raise your hand. Um, Cam, what kind of conflict could you have with yourself at Walmart? You can have one like, oh, I don't know if I should buy the great value bananas or if I should buy the dull bananas, that kind of conflict. Okay, yeah, what to buy and struggling over the decision, if you should spend the money or not. Absolutely, good job. Okay, what about a um, person versus person conflict uh, at Walmart? Oh, I got one. I got one. Please, please, please. Um, Kendall. Oh, I have a good one. That means two people are fighting over one thing. Okay, two customers fighting over one thing. Like, I'm picturing, like, Black Friday, people, like, throwing down over a set of the last sale item or something. Yeah, like, there's only one thing um, of toilet paper left. Only one roll of toilet paper left. we got to fight. Um, all right. Um, Zeke, give me your example. Uh, why? So, I mean, Christmas from the Greeks when they fight over the ham and they, they, oh, destroy, I love that movie. they destroy the snore. All right. He's he, he was remembering a movie, Christmas with the Cranks. They fight over a ham in the store and basically destroy the whole store. Okay. Josie, give me an example. That's a good one. In the store, uh, once, I, it was a few months ago. 
but um, it was where my grandpa, he was shopping, and then there was a ladder, and he needed to get something, and it's like maybe between the workers and the customer, mm -hmm. like if there's a problem, if you ask them to do something and they don't do it. Okay. Yep. I've, uh, I had a person versus person conflict at Walmart with one of the employees one time. Um, you know, like if you're in Walmart and you see the people that have the cart because they're getting like the gr online grocery orders and they're gathering up all the yeah. online grocery orders. And she has like this big cart of blue baskets or whatever. And so it's a really tall cart. So she wasn't like paying attention where she was going. And I had Lily there in the wheelchair and she just nailed Lily in a wheelchair with that stupid cart. And I, and then she didn't even apologize. She literally like backed up and she looked at me like, why is your stupid wheelchair kid in my way? And I'm like, ah, uh, and I was kind of rude. I, cause I was really frustrated in that moment. And I did not keep my cool, like a decent human should. And I was like, um, you could say, excuse me. And she was like, I don't have to say anything to you. And I was like, and I totally like didn't actually scream at her, but I was like, if like, it would be like a scene in a cartoon where there was like steam coming out of my head. I was so angry. And like, Lily was fine. She wasn't, but like, it's just like a pot, like you, like you accidentally bump into people at the store. Like you just say you're sorry and you go on. Like, and I was so mad that she was so rude. So I went and told the manager on her. Neener, neener. Um, so that's that. Okay. Person versus person. Um, all right. Give me, give me. We're still at Walmart. We're still at Walmart. Hang on. All right, Fiona. We're still on person versus person. Goodness. So my dad has this dream about um a Thanksgiving. So I'm gonna change it up a little bit. But he was he went into Walmart and he wanted to get a turkey for Thanksgiving. And he went in Walmart. And he got a turkey out of this guy's cart. Fiona said her dad had a dream that on Thanksgiving he went to Walmart to get the turkey and they were out of them. So he just took one out of some other dude's cart. <laughs> that would be a problem. Um, all right. Um, okay. We're still, we're still at Walmart and now it's person versus nature. Wait, what? Oh, I got one. I got one. I got one. I got one. Wow. Okay. Um, Sean. Okay. Where are all the parrots? No, no, that's not. I'm not talking about vegetables, nature. I'm talking about like there's a like nature. Usually when we're talking about man versus nature, it's like some sort of like natural disaster, weather. Um. Uh, Lily. Um, maybe you were walking outside and the, uh, all the carts fell on you. Okay. Um, all the carts like crashed into you. Maybe the wind blew them into you. Um, Riley. Um, hail like fell on your windshield and dented your car. And, like, hail fell on your windshield and dented your car. Josie. Maybe this would be really bad, but if there's like a tornado or some natural disaster and you had to like stay in Walmart. All right. So yeah, like a tornado while you're at Walmart and you had to kind of like take cover in the Walmart. That'd be weird. Um, Jason. Listen, guys. Like when you're walking outside of your house, like say you live in Hawaii or something, there's like this huge tsunami coming towards it. It's knocking all these, well, it's pushing all these uh, logs and everything. Like it's knocking all those at you. Okay, so we're at a Walmart on the beach and a tsunami is coming and throwing things at us. Okay. Well, I said we were still at Walmart, so you can't put me on the beach and not be at Walmart. Okay. Um, all right. Now, last one. This one might be harder. We're at Walmart. Person versus society. Oh, I got a good one. Zeke. Wait, what is society? Yeah. It could be like the community. Yeah. Yeah. There's just like people. There's these people that are protesting Walmart, and they walk in. 
and they're wrecking everything. Okay, so people protesting Walmart and they're wrecking everything. Yeah, All right. Walmart, and they're stealing stuff and knocking stuff over and they're raiding Walmart. And then you're the manager. And what do you do? You're just All right, like, so you're the manager, and there's an angry mob attacking your Walmart. That's what they Walmart. did to the state capitol. Yes, that happens. I'm not really sure why there's so many angry mobs. That's not really a thing. There's, there's peaceful protests, but what's happened? Hello? Because TikTok's where we get important information. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, Zeke took it to a political place where then some people said, um, "But wait, what about the angry mob at the Capitol?" Yeah, that was that was definitely an angry. That was me. Purse or Maggie? Sorry. Um, that was yeah, that bad situation. We talked about peaceful protesting being allowed as one of your rights in the Bill of Rights. What happened at the Capitol building was not a peaceful. It started as a peaceful protest, but it sure didn't end that way. Um, anyway, carrying on, any other people versus society at Walmart? Fiona. Okay, so Walmart is overcharging everybody for this. All right, Walmart is overcharging everybody, and so people are getting grumpy because Walmart's got their, they're like gouging prices. Okay. And Riley, last one, and then we're going to move on. Um. Like, what if construction people want to take Walmart down, but customers want Walmart to stay there, and they're not happy with it? Oh, okay, so, like, there's, like, a company that wants to, like, bulldoze Walmart because they want to build something bigger, better, and then there's, like, people protesting so that Walmart can stay. All right. Oh, put them all there instead. Josie. I think there's, like, I don't know if you already said that because I was out of the room, but, um... I maybe if there was like a problem that you told to like the manager or something, but several people have already asked that. Okay. Yeah. So like placing a complaint against Walmart to the manager, that would work. Um, okay. What about, let's do one more location. A little bit different. School. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, we're at school. Give me a person versus person conflict. Oh, wait, wow. Wow, that blew up. No, sit down. I'm not calling on you. I'm gonna. I'm gonna call on Sam Curley because he very quietly and calmly just raised his hand and is waiting patiently and not jumping up and running around and screaming. Oh, I never fought anybody at school. This is gonna be funny. At kids' corner. We haven't fought, but we've so much. And then, like... Okay, does a fight have to be actually physical? No. 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 You could just be mouthing. Yeah. You're just right running your mouth at somebody. At Apparently, at Kids' Corner, they're mouthing each other all the time, yeah, is what Sam and Lily are saying. Like okay, yeah. that's kind of bad. Um, Josie. If you're, like, talking very rudely to your teacher... Talking very rudely to your teacher. Most of you don't do that. Thank goodness. Um, all right. There are plenty, obviously, of um, conflicts we can have at school. Um, Maggie. Um. Zico. Me and Parker punch each other in the back of the Zeke and Parker punch each other in the back all the time. I don't know that that's necessarily a conflict as yeah, much as they're just horseplay. But, but they're mad at each other when we punch each other. In the oh, they're mad at each other. Hard. At school, they're mad at each other and punching each other. Just for no okay. reason. Okay, so apparently I just need to be sending children to the office. And so, <laughs> yes. so now we've got a Miss Bab versus the classroom society <laughs> problem <laughs> where there's, they're being unruly. Oh, yeah, but um, all right. Like I've got a really good voice. Okay, um, Jason. Like in second grade, me and Chase, and in fourth grade, me and Clay. Okay, so he says second grade, him and Chase, and fourth grade, him and Clay just didn't mesh. Clay. Didn't mesh. Like, that really happens. Great. You have friends that aren't your besties. Until what now. do you even call a friend? Right. Um, at lunch, what if someone gets so mad at someone else they start a food fight? Oh, no, somebody gets mad like at somebody and food fights at lunch? We should do that. Yeah. 
All right. Um, what about what about this? Um, we're gonna pause there. We're still at school. Man versus self. Oh, I had a really good one on me versus personal. I don't know if you want to hit somebody or not. Oh, what? Josie. Maybe on, like, how you look. How you look? Okay, so what, what to wear and how to, like, because you're worried yeah. about what other people are going to think kind of a thing. Okay. Um, Lily. Okay, making time to fit everything into your day and get your work done and balance. Well, I want to hang out with my friends, but I need to get stuff done. Um, okay, um, Fiona. Uh, like what should you get for lunch? What you're being rushed by other people, too. Okay, um, Maggie. Um, I was going to say the same thing as Lily, because that, that happens to me all the time, I'll be honest. I'm okay, so should I talk or should I get my work done? Yeah. Um, Grayson. No. No, Maggie said talk or get her work done. Jason said I usually choose talk because I usually talk all the time. What yeah. I don't know. Zeke. Oh, like, so when you're, like, doing your math or something, like, which, like, oh, yeah. way to figure out a problem or, like, okay. which answer to put, if you have multiple no answers, answers and you're, like, stuck with answering Okay, which answer should you pick? Um, in math, sometimes there's different ways to do a problem, trying to decide which way is the best way to do a problem. You guys are so sweet and so honest. I love you so much. Nobody even brought up cheating. Like, in my mind, like, should I cheat on the test was, like, the number one, like, conflict. Why was I, like, I just assumed, like, people would be thinking of cheating. Like, and you guys, God bless you. Nobody even thought about it. Uh, I heart you guys so much. Um, all right. Um, 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 let's do. Nature. Us versus nature at school. Oh, I have, oh, I have an example that just happened like a couple oh. days ago. Oh. Lily. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to the door. Okay. Like, if you get hurt, like, when something falls outside. Okay, getting hurt on the playground. Um, Parker. Okay, fine. Okay, so, um, so in second grade, First or second grade, or yeah, just playing like and then like, struck on the let, like yeah, it was just a good it was, it was, it was I a, can't hear you're all yelling. It was a rainstorm and then lightning like hit the ground. We were yeah, all outside. Yeah, and there yeah, was actually. Yeah. Okay, for some reason in second grade, everybody was outside at recess while it was yeah. raining and lightning was, struck the ground. It wasn't raining. It was too scary. It was too scary. Um, speaking of Platten, I can give an example of um when Landon was in kindergarten. It was also raining, and he was. They were waiting in line, like under the awning for the buses or whatever, and it was raining like pretty hard. So there was like. Rain kind of, it was going in the gutters, but it was like going over the side of the gutters because the gutters were full. And where Landon was, like he had to, like he was in line and he had to stay in line, but it was like raining on his head, God love him. And he was just like trying to be good and stay in line, but where he was standing, the rain was just like pouring on him and he got drenched by cold rain water. Um, and then his teacher was like, why didn't you move? And he was like, well, this was my spot in line. I didn't want to get in, out of line and get in trouble. Um, um, uh, Maggie. Um, just plug the connect at an address and we can What? Cool. Um, all right. And, and versus art. Man versus, versus nature. Uh, Grayson. I just remembered what I did with the man versus self point. Um, like, in my first or second grade in Latin, I was still allergic to eggs, but I'm, like, I was allergic to nuts and eggs. Back then. Okay. then, like this egg, something with eggs in it, and for and then for B choice, they have B, B, and J, so I didn't know what I could do. 
Oh. Who's that gonna Okay, that is a conflict. Okay. Um, Lily. Um, uh, one time it was raining outside, and then like our trunk had like uh like a little ridge in it. Uh huh. Cold water, and then when we lifted the trunk up, then it all like, dumped on me. Oh, so like a bunch of rain dumped out of their trunk on them. Okay. Um, oh, I have one that was just the other day in class. In class, right here, there was a stink bug. Oh, and that yeah. freaked everybody out. How did you um, not remember that? How did you not remember that? I thought you were going to say that for I sure. I remember it. I Zeke saved bug. the stink bug so we didn't kill it. Because he's really worried since I'm a snake good. killer that I was a stink so bug killer. Um. Yeah, it's just a stink bug. Um, I remember this was probably three or four years back because I worked at Peebly at the time and I was a kindergarten teacher there. But it started snowing, much like it's going to do today while we're at school. Now, we're not supposed to get a lot today, so we'll be fine. Will we get a plan on snow? That's up to your parents, dude, your family. Um, we're not going out there now. Okay, anyway, it snowed a lot. Like I, it iced first, so the roads were icy, and then it snowed on top of that, so the road conditions were like crazy bad. You guys probably would have been in like first or second grade ish about that time, because I think it was the year right before I came here, so you probably would have been second grade. Um, but it like we got out of school early. They told us to go home early. Hold on. Liam Blanche, you need to report back to your classroom. Okay, that's weird. Um, anyway, they let us out early, but not early enough. And like it was so slick and icy, and I taught kindergarten. Like we couldn't even walk down the sidewalk to get to the buses because the kids were like all like falling and slipping and everywhere. And the teachers had to form like a human chain from the door to the bus. And little kindergartners were like walking by, like holding on to us and hugging us and going from like teacher the teacher to get to the bus and there was Peebly's bigger so there were eight of us teachers there were eight kindergarten teachers so we did we had to form like a little human chain to get the kindergartners from the door to the bus um because it snowed so bad yeah yeah I just said that yeah that's not even how many of you knew that like when we, we were third grade like yeah okay all right I've totally talked about it like plenty before. Okay, um, last thing. Give me a man versus society at school, and then we got to wrap this up so we can actually read our book today. Sean, man versus society, but school. Okay, fine. Just give me an example of something. Okay. Why am I looking? Why are you guys looking at me? I'm not excited. So, um, those kids are pecking on the window. Oh, the kids pecking on the window yesterday. Yep. Yeah, uh, okay. Um, Lily. This actually happened yesterday at Kids Corner. Chase was cheating at dodgeball, and he got mad because he didn't think he was cheating, so he stomped all the way back to the classroom. And then went and sat in the corner. Yeah, and then everyone thought he was cheating because he was. But so it was him against everyone else. All right. So Chase versus everyone else at Kids Corner yesterday because he was oh, cheating, yeah. but he didn't think that what he was doing was cheating. Um, Josie, question. You bringing up that snow thing. Oh, do we have snow days if it snows? I really don't know what happens with snow days this year since we have the virtual set up if we just all stay home but still do virtual. I'm not really sure how we do snow days this year. Yeah, we totally like ruined snow days with the virtual yeah, learning. I hope we still have like a legit snow day at some point. Well, if we have snow days, then they'll have snow days, right? I don't know. Anyway, okay, Sophie. When they were talking about um, snow, it reminded me of a story where my mom didn't know it was going to rain. There was ice right in front of her car, and she slammed on her brakes, and we slid right off the road and crashed into a sign. Yikes. Okay, Sophie told us not at school. But um, definitely a nature conflict. They didn't notice some ice and they slid off the road into a it's sign. Okay, we're at school and we've got a man versus society problem. Oh, Grayson. I, did a, I want to do a man versus animals too. Okay. Um, so when I was in second grade, Chase McCourt and punched me in the gut. 
Okay, in second grade, Chase punched Grayson square in the gut. Okay. All right. Um, I've got a man versus society at school. Um, how about you disagree with playground rules or you disagree with how we have to sit at the lunchroom. We, uh, I have one how we disagree with or you disagree rooms. with the classroom the rules. Sally Walker rules. Yeah. Yeah. You don't know, remember that. That was in second grade when everyone fought because the girls were being super annoying and singing Little Sally Walker. Oh, it's just a game. game. It's just it was, a game. It was, it was so annoying. annoying. I know. And then she, and and people out. got in fist fights. Yeah. Okay, second graders thrown down game. because the girls were being annoying. I don't know. Um, okay. I don't know what was happening in second grade with y'all. Some feisty little creatures back then. Um, okay, I'm ready to read Hatchet. Chapter 8. Here we go. Chapter 8. We're already on chapter 8. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. I didn't think we were going to make it. That was loud. Okay. Like, guys, what did you think I wanted you to do when I just counted down? Okay. All right. At first, he thought it was a growl. Ruh -roh. In the still darkness of the shelter in the middle of the night, his eyes came open and he was awake and he thought there was a growl. But it was the wind, a medium wind in the pines that made some sound that brought him up, brought him awake. He sat up and was hit with the smell. It terrified him. The smell was one of rot, some musty rot that made him think only of graves with cobwebs and dust and old death. His nostrils widened and he opened his eyes wider, but he could see nothing. It was too dark. Too hard dark with clouds covering even the small light from the stars, and he could not see. But the smell was alive, alive and full, and in the shelter. He thought of the bear, thought of Bigfoot, and every monster he'd ever seen, and every fright maybe he'd ever watched, and his heart hammered in his throat. Yeah, Lily. I think it's the, the, the dead guy in the plane. Uh, Lily says maybe he's smelling like the death from the dead guy in the plane. Maybe he, maybe he just like rotted out. Much that he just he just he's decomposing. He rotted, he's he's he decomposing. And basically float, 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 a noise coming from his throat, but the hatchet missed, sailed into the wall where it hit the rocks with a shower of sparks, and his leg was instantly torn with pain, as if a hundred needles had been driven into it. Ah! Oh, I remember what happened. He has flint. Yeah. The, the rock is what, like, Zeke? The rock that he has is made out of flint, so when you rub the steel on flint, Fire. Zeke and Fiona are about to have a like panic attack right now because they just noticed that it said when he threw his hatchet and it hit the rocks, there was a shower of sparks. And so they said he can use his hatchet against the rock like a flint to make a fire. Good catch. Let's see if Brian figures that out. He's too dumb. How are you <laughs> Zeke says, I think he's too dumb. Okay, we're going to find out. We're going to find out because right now he his leg all of a sudden hurts. It's a snake he, because he hurts slithering. Now he screamed with the pain and hang on, but he threw the hatchet. Did he accidentally throw the hatchet into his leg? Maybe. Maybe. Uh oh. Or maybe. No, wait a minute. It wouldn't have made sense. Josie's face. Or maybe. Um, okay. Or the sparks burned him. Okay. All right. Let's listen. Now he screamed with the pain and fear and skittered on his backside up into the corner of the shelter, breathing through his mouth, straining to see, to hear. The slithering moved again. He thought toward him at first. The terror took him, stopping his breath. He felt he could see a low, dark form, a bulk in the darkness, a shadow that lived. But now it moved away, slithering and scraping. It moved away, and he saw or thought he saw it go out of the door opening. He lay on his side for a moment, 
then pulled a rasping breath in and held it, listening for the attacker to return. When it was apparent that the shadow wasn't coming back, he felt the calf of his leg where the pain was centered and spreading to fill the whole leg. His fingers gingerly touched a group of needles that had been driven through his pants and into the fleshy part of his calf. They were stiff and very sharp on the ends that stuck out, and he knew then what the attacker had been. A porcupine had stumbled into his shelter, and when he had kicked it, the thing had slapped him with its tail of quills. I've seen a porcupine. He touched each what? This was on our toys yesterday. The porcupine. We didn't take a quiz yesterday. Oh, a couple years ago. Did you use the porcupine? Where we had that arrow, the on hatchet. It was like the attack of the porcupine. The smell was alive. Okay. Um, he touched each quill carefully. The pain made it seem as if dozens of them had been slammed into his leg, but there were only eight pinning the cloth against his skin. He leaned back against the wall for a minute. He couldn't leave them in. They had to come out, but just touching them made the pain more intense. Like it's giving me like, it's making me feel bad just like reading about it. Like I'm feeling like. Maggie thinks maybe he can use those porcupine quills for something. Like reuse them. He can use it to make a blanket. Like a knitting blanket. Oh, he can use it to knit a blanket. How are you going to get out of the Yeah, where's he going to get the Josie, a tree. Um, so maybe the my sister told me that the, in class they learned something about porcupines. If you like twist it a certain way and stuff, it will not hurt at all. Taking them out, so huh. he's probably in the a, a grade above him, but maybe he's learned that in school. Probably all not. Right. Um, Hopefully. Wait, All right. So it? fast, he thought. So fast things change. When he'd gone to sleep, he had satisfaction. And in just a moment, it was all different. He grasped one of the quills, held his breath, and jerked. It sent pain signals to his brain in tight waves. But he grabbed another, pulled it, then another quill. When he had pulled four of them, he had to stop for a moment. The pain had gone from being pointed injury pain to spreading in the hot smear up his leg, and it made him catch his breath. Some of the quills were driven in deeper than others, and they tore when they came out. He breathed deeply twice, let half of the breath out, and went back to work. Jerk, pause, jerk, and three more times before he lay back in the darkness. Done. The pain filled his leg now, and with it came new waves of self-pity. Sitting alone in the dark, his leg aching, some mosquitoes finding him again, he started crying. It was all too much, just too much, and he couldn't take it. Not the way it was. I can't take it this way, alone with no fire and in the dark. And next time it might be something worse, maybe a bear. And it wouldn't be just quills in the leg. It could be worse. I can't do this, he thought again and again. I can't. Brian pulled himself up until he was sitting upright back in the corner of the cave. He put his head down on his arms across his knees with stiffness taking his left leg and cried until he was cried out. He did not know how long it took, but later he looked back on this time of crying in the corner of the dark cave and thought of it as when he learned the most important rule of survival, which was that feeling sorry for yourself just didn't work. It, yes. Um, he needs to get something on his leg before it, because he needs to stop the bleeding. Okay, Zeke is worried that there's a lot of bleeding on his leg right now that he doesn't even know about, that he needs to get some sort of like bandage on it and like tie it off so that it's not just like bleeding he out. Needs, he needs his windbreaker for Okay, use his windbreaker to tie it off or so he doesn't bleed out. How come, he's smarter than him? how come your guys are smarter than him? It's hard to think. Okay, how? It's hard, it's, hard to, it's hard to think when you're scared and afraid. It's hard to think clearly when you're scared, when you're afraid. Um, has he really had the right kind of nutrition in like three or four days now? No. Probably still dehydrated. Yes, he's getting some to drink, but probably not enough. He's dehydrated. He's hungry water. still. Um, so, no, you can't really think clearly. He also got, like, probably, like, a small concussion or something from the crash that he's having to, like, his brain's recovering. Sophie. I think from watching a, like, real-life TV show, like a documentary, kind of, I think they're just trying to sense that he's going to be, like, 
like help heal yourself or something. Oh wait, there's these one plants that you peel and like there's this gel stuff. Okay, so Sean remembered about um the yeah, plants yeah. that aloe plants um that have like the healing stuff in them if you peel them open. Okay. Um Josie. Um also he has a bunch of pain everywhere. So even if I like hurt myself pretty bad, like you can't think completely straight because like you can't even think past the pain if it's really that bad. Yeah, right. Exactly. Like all you can think of is this pain. hurts. This hurts. It hurts. Um yeah. Okay, we're gonna keep reading. He did not oh wait, 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 it wasn't just that it was wrong to do or that it was considered incorrect. It was more than that. It didn't work. Crying didn't work. When he sat alone in the darkness and cried and was done, was all done with it. Nothing had changed. His legs still hurt. It was still dark. He was still alone. And the self-pity had accomplished nothing. At last he slept again, but already his patterns were changing and the sleep was light. A resting doze more than a deep sleep with small sounds awakening him twice in the rest of the night. In the last doze period before daylight, before he awakened finally with the morning light and the clouds of new mosquitoes, he dreamed. This time it was not of his mother, not of the secret, but of his father at first, and then of his friend Terry. In the initial segment of the dream, his father was standing at the side of the living room looking at him, and it was clear from his expression that he was trying to tell Brian something. His lips moved, but there was no sound, not a whisper. He waved his hands at Brian, made gestures in front of his face as if he were scratching something. And he worked to make a word with his mouth, but at first Brian could not see it. The lips made an mmm shape, but no sound came. Mmm. Brian could not hear it, could not understand it, and he wanted to so badly. It was so important to understand his father, to know what he was saying. He was trying to help, trying so hard. And when Brian couldn't understand, he looked cross, the way he did when Brian asked questions more than once. And then he faded. Brian's father faded into a fog place Brian could not see, and the dream was almost over, or seemed to be, when Terry came. He was not gesturing to Brian, but was sitting in the park at a bench, looking at a barbecue pit, and for a time, nothing happened. Then he got up and poured some charcoal from a bag into the cooker. Then some starter fluid, and he took a flick type of lighter and lit the fluid. When it was burning and the charcoal was at last getting hot, he turned, noticing Brian for the first time in the dream. He turned and smiled and pointed to the fire as if to say, see, a fire. But it meant nothing to Brian except that he wished he had a fire. He saw a grocery sack on the table next to Terry. Brian thought it must contain hot dogs and chips and mustard, and he could think only of the food. But Terry shook his head and pointed again to the fire. And twice more he pointed to the fire, made Brian see the flames. And Brian felt his frustration and anger rise. And he thought, all right, all right, I see the fire, but so what? I don't have a fire. I know about fire. I know I need a fire. I know that. His eyes opened and there was light in the cave, a gray dim light of morning. He wiped his mouth and tried to move his leg, which had stiffened like wood. There was thirst and hunger, and he ate some raspberries from the jacket. They had spoiled a bit, seemed softer and mushier, but still had a rich sweetness. He crushed the berries against the roof of his mouth with his tongue and drank the sweet juice as it ran down his throat. A flash of metal caught his eye, and he saw his hatchet in the sand where he'd thrown it at the porcupine in the dark. He scooched up, wincing a bit when he bent his stiff leg and crawled to where the hatchet lay. He picked it up and examined it and saw a chip in the top of the head. The nick wasn't large, but the hatchet was important to him, was his only tool, and he should not have thrown it. He should keep it in his hand and make a tool of some kind to help push an animal away. Make a staff, he thought, or a lance, and save the hatchet. Something came then, a thought as he held the hatchet, something about the dream and his father and Terry, but he couldn't pin it down. What is he trying to put together here? What do you think? How to make a fire. How to make a fire, Lily says. He hit the spot when he hit the spark from like he realized he didn't like completely think it, but he knew it. And when he had the dream and made him think of the fire, and now he's trying to figure out what it means. And eventually he'll figure out that wait, I did spark last night. Okay, so Fiona says when he threw the hatchet last night, he saw the sparks, but it didn't completely register with him because he was so afraid of whatever was in the dark. He wasn't thinking about fire and the sparks right then. And then, but subconsciously, his brain knew that those sparks were something important. And then he had the dreams about fire. And now he's noticing the hatchet and he's starting to kind of, and he's like, wait a minute, the hatchet, my dream, 
Fiona thinks he's going to put it together. Ah, he scrambled out and stood in the morning sun and stretched his back muscles and his sore leg. The hatchet was still in his hand, and as he stretched and raised it over his head, it caught the first rays of the morning sun. The first faint light hit the silver of the hatchet, and it flashed a brilliant gold in the light, like fire. That is it, he thought, what they were trying to tell me. Fire. The hatchet was the key to it all. When he threw the hatchet at the porcupine in the cave and missed and hit the stone wall, it had showered sparks, a golden shower of sparks in the dark, as golden with fire as the sun was now. The hatchet was the answer. That's what his father and Terry had been trying to tell him. Somehow he could get fire from the hatchet. The sparks would make fire. Brian went back into the shelter and studied the wall. It was some form of chalky granite or a sandstone but embedded in it were large pieces of a darker stone, a harder and darker stone. It only took him a moment to find where the hatchet had struck. The steel had nicked into the edge of one of the darker stone pieces. Brian turned the head backwards so he would strike with the flat rear of the hatchet and hit the black rock gently, too gently and nothing happened. He struck harder a glancing blow and two or three weak sparks skipped off the rock and died immediately. He swung harder, held the hatchet so it would hit a longer sliding blow and the black rock exploded in fire. Sparks flew so heavily that several of them skittered and jumped on the sand beneath the rock, and he smiled and stuck again, struck again and again. There could be fire here, he thought. I will have a fire here, he thought, and struck again. I will have a fire from the hatchet. That's a good chapter. That was a good chapter, Sophie says. Um. All right, guys. That's it for today. Um. We have... Questions today? Only three. Um, on the back, though, there are questions about. Friendly. Yes, about um, conflict. Okay. Um. So you got time to work on your worksheet now, and I will. We will have math. Oh, you wish it said how his leg. Oh, yeah, he didn't even check out his wound on his leg yet. That's weird. Um, yeah.